Hello everyone, Redex here, welcome to episode 156 of my Synth Let's Play. So in the previous episode I finally finished my Apple Juice project. Um, finally started storing up Apple Juice. It's relatively slower to everything else that I'm collecting pretty much, but I finally resolved the problem that I had uh, here in this small oak tree farm. And I've got this Steve Scarts uh, woodcutter to keep cutting and chopping this uh, oak wood and collecting apples for me. Um, so, uh, since I've got this project done, I started looking forward to, towards the next possible liquids. Uh, but before doing any of that, I'd like to actually apply some technical change here. Uh, now, it's something that I've ignored uh, from Zycraft, which is actually a very interesting block. If I go over to all the Zycraft related uh, blocks, there are many different blocks here, but what I've ignored is the item I.O. I think, uh, I've actually, to be honest, I've never used it before, but I think it should be perfect for what I need. Um, so the item I owe is a very interesting block. Hopefully I'm gonna get this done and you'll see what I'm talking about. Uh, I think this recipe shouldn't be too much of a problem. Uh, all I need is iron bars, some engineering bricks and a chest. So what in theory it should be doing is help me basically replace all those liquid ducts and ugly torches into one uh, block that will be actually part of the tanks themselves. So let's add the recipe, see how that turns out. So, I will need some sort of an engineering brick uh, as a part of the recipe. And some bars. And a chest. And obviously, um, also a blank pattern. So let's get one. Okay, so the recipe looks like this, so four engineering bricks, four iron bars, and this thing gives you the item I.O. And the item I.O., uh, as far as I understand it, will be in the future at least, when there are more multi-block uh, related machines in Zycroft, will pretty much be kind of a universal block um, that will let you interface with uh, multi-blocks machines or multi-blocks uh, stuff. Uh, for example, um, the blast furnace is a multi-block uh, structure and the coke oven is a multi-block structure, although they're both railcraft, not Zycraft. Uh, but kind of, Sorin kind of is planning for the future, so at the moment I think only Zycraft tanks are multi-blocks. There might be something else that I forgot, but pretty much they're the only thing. So the item I always kind of avoid to interface with them. Uh, so let's do it. So uh, let's get uh, one of them, an item I.O or four because that's how I create them. And let me show you what it's doing. Let me also get a bucket to prove the concept or get just a stack. Okay, so let me disconnect this small uh, contraption right there and show you that at the moment this tank isn't connected to anything. If I just emptied out uh, three buckets, you can see the water level went down. Let's uh, empty out a si larger significant amount. There you go. So. Approximately, it's half empty at the moment. If I try to place the tank directly next to the valve itself, it will not fill up. And that's by uh, definition, because valves don't work that way. And this is on fill up mode, not on empty mode. And as you can see, it doesn't work. If I try to shift right click, do something about it, it doesn't do anything. But if I replace one of those blocks with the item IO, update the multi-tank again, I can come here and modify the way this thing works. Now, I'm looking for, I think, I'm um, looking for the orange color. And the orange color, what that means is you can see th this color kind of changed. And this is always the output slot of the multi-tank. So now, this being the orange color, if I place this nearby, it should start filling up actually is being emptied because something else is consuming it. Uh, this also doesn't fill up. Okay, so I guess... Um, hmm. Maybe item IOs are not my friend anyway, after all. Or maybe they only interface with... Uh, with items and not liquids, and that pretty much makes it uh, useless. 
So I've got this slot, I've got this slot, and I've got the universal slot. There are three different colors, and I guess all of them don't help me. This is kind of unfortunate. Hmm. Is there any other type of block that can make me make this look a little bit nicer? There is the liquid void, fire basins, aquarium soils, aquarium water, item IO, valve, liquid detector, and all of those. Nope, I guess not. So I guess uh, I just had some plans and <laughs> they just got thrashed by the lack of knowledge that I have, which doesn't make it work that way. I do know for a fact that if you try to place items, it will work. That, that's kind of a fact. Um, I don't know if it will spill them out, but if, for example, this at the moment is the output, if I place a bucket of water here and place a chest here, it will spill out items. There we go. So this, it works that way, I guess, but that, again, is not what, it doesn't help me too much. So unfortunately, I just wanted to make things a little bit nicer, but I couldn't, so this is kind of a failed project, unfortunately. But sometimes that's how life is. Okay, so let's just uh, replace everything that I've taken out and restore the tank itself. So just fill it up with all the buckets. Anyway, if you guys know what I was doing wrong, or if it's something that um, simply I cannot do, just let me guys let me know in the comment below. It will be quite helpful. All right. So in the previous episode, I was looking on what could be my possible uh, next project, and there are three different liquids that kind of caught my attention. There was the crushed ice. Uh, this is a type of liquid that I could in theory start making. Uh, there was coolant also liquid that I can try and make. And finally there was steam, which is also, it's not actually a liquid, but uh, this is pretty much how it was implemented. It was implemented kind of a, as a form of liquid. So I was starting to take a look at what could be my possible next project. And I was looking towards, mainly towards uh, crushed ice. And I didn't know at the time but crushed ice is created from using ice shard. Using combining ice shards and snowballs, you get uh, this uh, liquid ice, the crushed ice liquid. But at the time, I didn't know that ice shard is actually a product of bees. And it's a unique uh, bee product. Uh, similarly to the way um, demonic bees can create glowstone, like it's not a part of a comb. It's not a comb that you centrifuge into the product. It's a direct product out of the bee. Um, as a result of that, I cannot actually come up with a recipe, like I cannot do ice shard. And any eye, if I try to do uh, the recipe for ice shard, it will not bring up anything because it's not actually exactly a recipe. Either way, I started inoculating the maximum fertility serum into in the, an industrious drone and the wintry princess, because that's the start of a chain to get there. And I'm going to start um, breeding them hopefully make them mutate. I've got some other stars right here that should do the job. This obviously is a hostile environment because they usually like uh, colder uh, places. So let's turn on uh, the fans. So turn this to extraction mode. Is it still in hostile environment? At the moment it's cold and it's damp. Uh, they like icy and normal. So let's turn on this thing as well. Uh, or more precisely, take it out. Try and start breeding them to give them the right environment so they stop complaining. Yep, and that seems to be like a good environment. Normal humidity and cold temperature. I've got another star right here, which in theory should make the mutation 100%, although from my experience it doesn't really work that way for some reason. But that should help me make my way towards um, the crushed ice bee. I think it's called the icy bee or something. That's the bee that will generate uh, the product that I'm looking for. Okay, let's just quickly get rid of all of that good stuff. And continue. So, 
since at the moment I'm working towards the crushed ice, let's take a look at what could be my other two options, which is either steam or uh, coolant. Uh, so to create coolant, I think that's kind of a byproduct of uh, industrial craft that can actually let you create um, those cells in a different way. As you can see, you can create, you can fill up, I don't know, no idea what's liquid registry is, but apparently if you if you uh, you can basically fill up cans or cells with this coolant liquid to get the coolant cells. The coolant cells are used, um, I think, only in reactors, only in nuclear reactors. I'm not using any of them because there are, in my opinion, there are better methods uh, to use them. But uh, what I'm actually interested in is how exactly do I create the actual liquid? Now, I would assume it will be pretty much the reverse the reverse um, process, taking the coolant cell and uh, kind of processing it to turn it into liquid. Now I can't seem to come up with the right way to make it, so let's just improvise. Uh, let's try making one of those coolant cells and see what happens if I dump it into a liquid transposer. So right now I'm on empty mode. If I dump it in liquid transposer, I get nothing and if I dump it into magma crucible I also get nothing. Okay so how do I get the actual coolant liquid? Um, I think it tells me that in the combustion engine I actually don't understand how, how to read this and I have no idea what the liquid registry is. What's the liquid registry? Is it, is it a block? I don't think it's a block. No, it's not a block. Okay, let me try and realize how exactly do I make this coolant liquid. Okay, so apparently it's a lot simpler than it is. Uh, all you need to do, uh, it interfaces very nice with the Zycraft tanks, is simply dump the coolant cell into this uh, empty slot kind of uh, feature that those tanks has. So simply dump it in here, it empties, it gets rid of the cell and gives you the coolant. So let's uh, find a way to actually make it completely automatic. It shouldn't be too much of a problem, but uh, it will be a little di bit different. And you know what? I think I can actually use uh, the item IO right here at the moment after all. So let's do that. Uh, so what I'm going to need is this one of those item IOs. And I'm going to need um, a Tesseract. I'm going to get an item Tesseract. Now I could go ahead and uh, have cables, have the Platinum Logistics cable running all over the place to get here, but I think when I use Tesseract to keep this kind of uniform, that every tank has its own input. Now even though uh, most other tanks, or all the other tanks, use the liquid Tesseract, this one's going to use the item Tesseract, but still it's going to be kind of the same uniform look. So let's get rid of this and place the item IO, IO here, re-update the tank, and change the mode to be, I think it's blue. Yeah, blue will go to the input. And if I have my item tesseract ready already, uh, only got one. Let's set it up to be right here. So that item tesseract will push its outputs toward any adj adjacent inventory or obviously the item IO and that will be uh, frequency 1 is B network, 2 is sorting network, 3 is for SICUM, 4 is netherrack, 5 will be the frequency and that will be uh, coolant cells. And that will be again receiving only, similar to every other task right here. And the output will be from my uh, small uh, machinery room downstairs. So what I'm going to need is an export bus, a relay, and another item task rack. So let's get those. So a relay, an export bus, and an item task rack, which will obviously take a little bit of a while to finish. Or is it finished already? Yeah, it's finished already. Nice. And that will be just coming into here. So if I'm going to have the relay facing, let's have the test rack first, the relay facing upwards. This one will be sending only coolant cells. This relay will push into it and that export bus will either move or craft coolant cells all the time. 
So let's get one of them and set it up as the recipe kind of thing. The export configuration. And if I come back and take a look at the actual tank, I should see it start filling up with coolant liquid. Now, to be honest, I have no idea why you want to do with this. Like, why would you want to do it? I don't know, except for a project like this where you want to have every type of liquid. Uh, that, Because as far as I understand it, you can store liquid that way and then you can move it around and redo it again, like uh, empty, uh, fill up uh, empty cans. But then again, uh, empty cells, sorry. But then again, why would you want to do it? Why not just store it in, in um, item form? I don't know. But uh, I don't know, it's kind of amusing, so let's just uh, build it up. Okay, so finally, if I ignore the crushed ice project, the only final liquid that I still haven't dealt with is steam. And I've actually... you'll be surprised, but at the very, very early beginning of my Let's Play, I actually used the steam engine. I should still have it lying around, uh, somewhere around here. I've got the pit fired engine, the electrical engine, there we go. The hobbyist steam engine. That was the very early beginning of my Let's Play because it's a very easy thing to run. It used just water and coal, and it was a little bit more efficient than the normal uh, Stirling engine, or whatever it's called, the coal engine. Keep, the name keeps changing, I think, yeah, the Stirling engine is called. It's a little bit more efficient, so that's the reason why I used it. Although, just it also required water. And that's a key feature. Steam is essentially water. And that's also in real life, if you, if you didn't know. Um, so, I'm going to start taking a look on how do I get steam production running. Now, there are a couple of parts in the process of making it. I see there is a steam oven, a steam turbine housing, a steam turbine, uh, no clue what this is, uh, but in order to create steam, yeah it doesn't actually say. Okay, let me quickly try and figure this out. Okay, so creating steam is kind of very, it's not a very complex, uh, pro it's not a very complex uh, process, but it has many different types of options to craft it. So it kind of, you craft it in something called uh, steam pressure or something, I don't know what it's called, but it's a multi-block um, structure, I believe, from Railcraft, although I'm not 100% uh, sure. Either way, uh, you create it using two types of blocks. First, as a base, you're going to need some sort of a fuel, uh, fuel storage. Now, you can either use um, a liquid fuel firebox or a solid fuel firebox. Now, when you type firebox in the in NEI, actually almost anything that can be cooked in the solid fuel tells you how much heat it's going to generate. Now, heat is something kind of unique to the steam, um, steam crafting process, uh, but as you can see, almost anything can be cooked uh, will show up. And when you look at the other things, at all the liquid capsules, you can actually see that those go into the uh, liquid-fueled firebox. So as you can see, a biofuel capsule, for example, will give me 32,000 heat in the liquid-fueled firebox. And, for example, a fuel capsule, normal fuel, will give me 96,000. Uh, a lava capsule will give me uh, 2,000 heat fuel. Now, fuel will again, it's going to be 96,000 and pretty much. So I can use either biofuel, normal fuel, lava, or creosote oil. Now, in terms of efficiency per bucket, you can clearly see that fuel is the best one. But I think uh, for the sake of this project, I'm actually going to start using biofuel. Mainly because I just want to have a use for biofuel. And, well, to be honest, it's easier to move around because I can move it with the tanks and... And well, I don't, just don't want to burn anything else solid, such as uh, coal or wood or anything like that. So let's go ahead and create um, the liquid firebox. And you can actually create it either um, in a square shape, I think, either one-sized block, uh, two-sized, or three-sized. So a three-by-three, three, or a two-by-two, two, or basically just one. So let's go ahead for maximum size. I'm going to go for 3x3. Three three. So I'm going this recipe nine times. 
So that's going to mean uh, 36 steel plates. I don't think I can actually... Uh, steel plates will require steel ingots. And that's actually going to require a lot of steel, which I didn't account for. Um, probably should have started cooking it earlier. But, uh, well, since I didn't know, I'm just going to let it start cooking right now. Uh, it's going to take a little bit of a while, but uh, in the meantime, we can start building anything else. Uh, I still have a little bit of steel plates here, but that's, that's not even close to being enough. Iron plate, on the other hand, I think are being used in the solid fuel box. No. Well, in the solid fuel box, you don't need any plate at all. Uh, but again, that's kind of a cheaper way to do it, so I really want to use the liquid-fueled uh, firebox. It's obviously more expensive because simply the efficiency of per bucket or per item is a lot higher when you use liquid. So this is pretty much the reason why it's so, so much more expensive. Uh, but also, apart from the fireboxes, which are the base of everything, you're also going to need some sort of a tank or uh, steam forgot the name, uh, something called with pressure. There we go. I've got a low pressure boiler or a high pressure boiler. Now, uh, both of them can be used, not, uh, not at the same, uh, not at the same multi-block, you have to choose either one, you cannot kind of uh, use them interchangeably. The way I understand it is a low pressure boiler uh, will make things, will make, um, will make steam slower it won't be as fast, but it will be more efficient per fuel used. Where a high pressure boiler, where pretty much, uh, as you might guess, it will make it it will make steam a lot faster, but it won't be as efficient, because there is also this factor of heat, where the steam cooker has to heat up first, and this kind of a lot of math involved. And to be honest, I don't understand it fully, but what I'm going to go for is the low pressure boiler. Uh, mainly because I'm not, not in a hurry to create things faster, just want to create them to store them. So, since I'm going to have a 3x3 three three base of those uh, fireboxes, I'm going to have a 3x3x3 three by three by three, um, pressure boilers. So that's going to mean uh, 27 of those blocks or 54 uh, rolling machines. Well, 54 iron plates. But that's divided by 4, so a little bit less. Anyway, uh, let me figure out the math quickly. Well, since I already got some of those iron plates, I can actually craft a little bit less. Uh, let's craft, if I've got, I'm going to need uh, 54 plates. I'm going to say that's uh, 46. I'm going to need the process 12 times. So let's have a bunch of iron. And I'm going to need the rolling machine somewhere. And I have one right here. So if I set up the recipe like this, I'm going to need this uh, 12 times. So it will be like this, this, and this. It will start just auto crafting. It will be limited by the fact that I have 12 here, so that will just stop when I have enough, when this will run out. Uh, in terms of steel, it's going to take a little bit of a while. In the meantime, I can also, let's check up on my bees. Okay, so I got, there we go, I got the Icy Princess, that's what I was looking for. Uh, let's try, or was it actually, let's see, let's realize it. I think I'm actually going to this one more step. If I take a look at the products. Oh no, this is the one that I was looking for. Nice. Okay, so this is the one I'm looking for. Let's try just inbreed it, so I get uh, a higher... Um, more of them basically. So let's uh, place this in. Uh, I'm going to need an apiary for this. And a lot of soul, soul frames to increase the rate of which they die. So I got uh, some here. So this and this. Place them here and just let them inbreed between themselves and because I'm using soul frames they're gonna die faster but since I inoculated oh wait I can't do it in apiary because it's too cold for them forgot about that okay so I'm gonna simply do it here again well they do have the high fertility rate so that's pretty good on its own 
without the soul frames, so it's kind of worth it either way. Okay, so I'm gonna let those bees breed and I'm gonna let the steel cook and I'll be right back. Okay, so since I'm anyway waiting for the steel to cook, <clears throat> what I'd like to do is since I lately noticed I'm using quite a lot of steel, or not quite a lot, but I'm using some steel, uh, let's set up some sort of a way to automatically craft steel. So let's get uh, a level emitter. I've got also an export bus, an import bus, and all that good stuff. So let's have the ex export bus. I think it, it doesn't have to be on the top, even though I placed it on the top right here. I don't think it has to be. We're going to definitely see right now. Uh, let's have the um, export bus right here, an import bus right here, and oh, actually, let's not have it like this. So the import bus right here, the level emitter right here, and cables connected to everything. And before finally connecting it, and by the way, just added those two monitors right here, just to track uh, the tracks nicely. Uh, so the import bus will only work uh, with a signal and the signal will be emitted when I have less than say 128 so less when I have less than two stacks of steel it will emit a signal and it will try to import whatever is available to import and the extra bus will always be running and it will always be uh, exporting iron and coal coke and if I did everything correctly, if I try uh, just connecting it to the rest of my network, iron will be placed on the top. And when this is full, coal coke will be placed on the bottom. And when any time steel is available, it will be imported into the system as long as this has a signal. And it will stop having a signal when I have 128 or two stacks. Now, as a result, basically at the moment I need steel, I'm gonna have three stacks available, two at my actual inventory and one available uh, in the actual inner inventory of the blast furnace. Just kind of a small little uh, project just to make sure that I'm always restocked with steel, mainly because I just noticed that I'm using it lately for some odd reason. But yeah, I'm using it nevertheless, so. Okay, so I've got my 44 I need to craft manually this as well. And this is going to let me create my low pressure boilers. I'm going to need 27 of them. So this will give me 28. So if I remove one of those, this gives me 27 low pressure boilers. Now without the actual fireboxes, I cannot do anything with them. So I'm going to have to wait until I actually have the fireboxes and until then, just a waiting game. And I'm already starting to generate a little bit of, the, of those ice shards, although it's not exactly the plan yet. I'm planning on... Oh, there we go, even more. I'm planning on to have this Icy Queen breed into more bees, extract the Icy Queen genome, uh, splice it into many other bees, and have actually like two or three of those alvearies running at any given time. Uh, but until that happens, uh, what I'd like to do before ending the episode, since <coughs> unfortunately not going to have any steam, uh, in this episode. What I'd actually like to do is uh, get one small project done, which is a part of the liquid firebox recipe. I've got furnaces, I've got buckets, I've got seal plates, I've got iron bars, but I've got fire charges, which is something I haven't crafted before ever. It's actually a vanilla item. And it's uh, in an interesting vanilla item. It has its uses. Uh, but it's crafted like this, blaze powder, gunpowder, and coal. Now, fortunately, I already got all of those uh, products on constant supply, and either constant supply or an auto-crafting supply. So there is no problem there. I'm, all I'm going to need to do is just get one of each. So one gunpowder, one blaze powder, and one piece of coal, and just some, just a blank uh, pattern. And that will give me the fire charge. Now, fire charges on their own are actually quite interesting. They can be used... Again, they're completely vanilla item. They're nothing... They're not a modded item. They may have used in, mod, in mods, like, right, as you have just seen, creating the liquid firebox. But on their own, I don't know if I can actually use them manually. 
I think I'm going to the dispenser to use them, but if I right click them, yeah, you can't use them manually. But if you right click them, uh, what just happened? <laughs> I just lost them. But uh, if you use them on the dispenser, they basically shoot kind of fireballs. So it's kind of uh, an interesting little thing. Uh, do they have uh, any other use other than crafting liquid fireboxes? Um, liquid firebox, solid firebox, aqua something. No idea what that is. Oh, and fireworks as well. Well, that's pretty much it then. Okay, so I uh, got coolant done. I hopefully the tank should be full already. Yep, it's full. So I've got coolant done. It's going to be waiting for an extra coolant cell to be processed. And I assume probably the relay pushing pushing those cells into the test track is actually also full. Uh, let's take a look. Yep, it's also full of coolant cells. So I've got coolant done. And I started to wor working towards uh, steam and also towards crushed ice, which both of them should start uh, hopefully working in the next episode, if not just one at least. Anyway, as you can see also, I'm uh, importing steel into the system. I should already have a nice amount of steel, or at least like uh, 12. Yeah, not bad. All right, so as always, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.